year, May 18 is celebrated worldwide as the International Museum Day, a unique moment for international museum community to plan creative events and activities related to the theme to engage with public and highlight the role of museum as institutions that serve society and its development. This year's theme is Museum for Education and Research. Last year, more than 37,000 museums participated in the event, about uh, 158 countries and territories. In today's episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV, to discuss more on this theme, uh, we have invited uh, Dr. Tenzi Laudun, a research fellow from Tibet Policy Institute on the significance of museum and role of Tibet Museum in keeping alive Tibetan identity and in advocating justice for Tibet. Welcome to our program, Ladala. Thank you, Pandala. Uh, so to start with, um, can you uh, tell us uh, what role do museums play in community and how do you see Tibet museums influence and role in the community and the non-Tibetan uh, visitors here? Right. Um, so before uh, we uh, continue this conversation, I, I want to make it clear here that uh, uh, I don't, I'm not an uh, expert on museum, uh, nor do I work in Tibet museum per se. So uh, I request all to take my word with a pinch of salt. So with that, uh, I think you have raised some very important questions here, Vandala. Uh, what is the role of museum? I think uh, it's uh, pretty simple uh, for the fact that museums are primarily, primarily built as, as an educational institution but more importantly as a public institution uh, to sort of like what you have mentioned right now to promote and preserve culture, history, and document uh, 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 narratives, document you know, like experiences of people involved in these histories, right? Um, but other than, other than those aspects of museum, well, I think there are, I, there are three main role that museum can play that comes to my mind is that first of all, um, what role does museum play is that they, museum crystallizes time. It takes back audience back to that particular past history. For instance, take for instance the Holocaust Museum, which is based in Washington DC, right? It's sort of, the Holocaust Museum highlights Jewish tragedy that happened back in 1940. So it takes people back to that past history. It's sort of the artifacts and the audiovisuals audio uh, you know, that are displayed in the museum speaks to the audience. It engages audience with that past history. I think in that sense, museum plays an important role in taking the audience back to that time, in, in engaging with the visitors. And the second important role that I feel that museum plays is that it kind of builds a shared memory uh, of multiple people. For instance, take for instance, Tibet Museum itself. The artifacts that are displayed in Tibet Museum are donated by Tibetans themselves of various background, even non-Tibetans who have contributed to the artifacts, right? It shows a collective sense of responsibility. It shows a collective sense of oneness within ourselves that Tibetans should come together and work together in that process in building this museum, in building this education institution. So in that sense, museum plays an important role in, role in bringing that shared memory, in bring, bringing people together. And third of all, continuing with that, the role, the important role that museum plays in sort of, it helps build national consciousness. For instance, Tibet Museum itself is built on the political history to highlight uh, Tibetan narratives, right? Which is not seen in any other museums around the world, be it Rubin Museum or Metropolitan Museum in New York. So I think Tibet Museum in that sense plays an important role in bringing that self national consciousness within Tibetans, right? But the second question that you have raised, what influence does Tibet Museum plays for the Tibetans and the non-Tibetans particularly? In that sense, I've, I feel like, first of all, what uh, the Tibetan, the Tibet Museum, uh, the fact that we should acknowledge the fact that Tibet Museum is located centrally in the, uh, uh, in the vicinity where it share uh, where it shares sort of, sort, of, sort of like the vicinity with two very important political institutions. Uh, Tibet Museum is located in the middle of Central Tibetan Administration. It shares, uh, it is uh, located right next to Tibetan Library, which is one of the earliest and the biggest library in 
in exile, right? So we should acknowledge the fact that Tibet Museum is uh, located, uh, a shared location with two of the most important institution in exile. And second of all, uh, Tibet Museum itself is built uh, and run by Tibetans themselves. Uh, the research that are being conducted in Tibet Museum are uh, done by Tibetans themselves. So this is a very sort of like, I feel for Tibetans, it's a huge milestone for Tibetans themselves can curate, you know, uh, uh, materials in a Tibetan museum itself. And third of all, I think it is an important space to engage between Tibetans and the non-Tibetans. For instance, uh, when I met people in Dharamsala in Metlod Ganj, a lot of the people I would say, I would tell them to visit Tibetan museum and engage with the Tibetan history. The very question that why Tibetans are here in Maglod Ganj, why Tibetans are here in India for the past 60 years, I think Tibet Museum will answer to those very important questions. In that sense, I think Tibet Museum plays an important role. Mm, definitely. And um, I'd like to ask you, uh, what is the significance of Tibet Museum in the face of uh, growing propaganda uh, from the communist uh, state, uh, where they are, um, all over the world uh, creating uh, an, their own narrative, narratives on the past, uh, on the last scale, right? Uh, mostly false narrative on Tibet and uh, changing the, uh, they're trying to change the history, uh, rich history and culture that we have. True, uh, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, the fact that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and you have mentioned in your um, introduction that the key role that museum play or, uh, is naturally to promote and preserve uh, Tibetan culture, cultural heritage, right, and Tibetan history, and uh, also to help understand people, uh, Tibetan history better. However, what we see with China is that they're engaged in um, uh, museums rebuilding around the world, including in China, and particularly in Tibet. And they're involved in building museums in Tibet because uh, because they, I think China is involved in what you through museum, using museum as a tool, uh, they sort of legitimize their authority over the region and promote a particular uh, Chinese narrative of Tibetan culture and history, which is catered towards what? Their interest, right? But more than that, what I feel is important is that Tibet museum can play an important role as providing a alternative narrative to what, what you say, uh, the narrative that is already present around the world, not just the Chinese museum, but museums, for, in, for instance, Tibet mu uh, museums that showcase Tibetan Buddhist culture, for instance, Rubin Museum or the Metropolitan Museum has a huge section that displays Tibetan Buddhist culture. But what we don't see here is that when it comes to presenting Tibetan political history, they often take this called neutral stand. And that neutrality, um, adds or feeds into the Chinese narrative of, you know, what do you say, their own narr narrative over Tibetan history and culture. And I think that Tibet Museum can fill that gap, you know. Uh, uh, the fact that why Tibetans are here, uh, the fact that why Tibet Museum is built in Dharamsala and not in Lhasa, you know, these are, these are the questions that Tibet Museum can present to the visitors, not Rubin Museum or not Metropolitan Museum. In that sense, I think Tibet Museum plays an important role. And the fact that Tibet Museum is built in Dharamshala and the fact that we have a section called, you know, Tibetan identity and I am Tibetan and, you know, I eat Samba and all these speaks to what our own narrative that opposed to Chinese narrative of uh, uh, Tibetan history and culture. And um, since this year's uh, International Museum Day theme is education and research, so uh, what kind of future scope uh, do you see Tibet Museum can provide, particularly in the field of uh, education and research, since uh, you come with the um, research background at Policy Institute, so uh, what future scope do you see there? Um, uh, unlike, uh, um, what do you say, unlike other museums around the world, uh, Tibet Museum in particular is catered towards this particular, uh, particularly to highlight Tibetan, what do you say, statehoodness, uh, Tibetan aspiration, I would say, and uh, Tibetan political history that is missing around the world. And I think um, the very fact that uh, museum, Tibet Museum or any museum uh, plays as a public uh, educational institution and that 
it engages with people with different background. See, if you, if you go to universities, if you take up particular subjects or area studies, right, uh, the, uh, the professor or the students will engage in a particular, uh, 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 particular what it is, subjects. But you won't have different, various people with various background engaging on the same topic. So that is why I feel like Tibet Museum or museum in, uh, museum in generally, because the fact that they are, but they are public institution and you have visitors from various backgrounds, be it old, young, or Tibetan, or non-Tibetan, or professional, or non-professional, everybody is interested in that visionary sort of like representation. And that sort of engages people with the kind of story that you are telling people with. And in that sense, I think Tibet Museum has a, a role or a scope in engaging people with different background. Mm -hmm. And um, in present time, when you see the museum uh, around everywhere, it's available online, right? Why do you think it is uh, different or it's important for us to visit the museum in person? Right. Um, true, I think uh, this question is quite important, uh, especially after the post-pandemic, right? Uh, and as we have mentioned earlier, CTA itself has a virtual tour of the uh, Central Tibetan Administration, which is quite amazing. And um, I think if we, if we can have both, which is best, but uh, when, you, when, uh, when you talk about the difference between the importance of having a physical museum rather than a sort of like a, uh, what do you say, um, 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 uh, uh, rather than a non-physical, what do you say, a museum, uh, I think the difference lies in the fact that, you know, uh, when you visit museum physically, you get to see the artifacts, right? You get to see, uh, you get to physically see the visuals. And uh, as, the, as the proverb goes, uh, what do you say, picture speaks thousands of words, right? And I think it's true in that sense. When you, when you visit museum physically, you engage with that artifact. You engage with that story. Not just that, but you have people working in the museum itself. And you have questions, I'm sure. And you can engage with the curators. Mm. And which is quite amazing a learning experience, isn't it? And which is missing in, uh, say, when you have a virtual museum. You cannot do that. But the fact that, you know, uh, 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 but the fact that Chinese believe that seeing is believing. I think it's important when it comes to whether it's a virtual or non-virtual. You get to see in real what is, uh, what is, what do you say? What does, how does it feel to visit the museum? How does it feel to see and hear the stories, uh, stories tell by, you know, experience or shared by the person itself that is recorded in audio visual? So these are the kind of experience that very fact, the strong impression that is left when you visit the museum is, I think, very different from visiting a museum physically or virtually. So, um, Dr. Lanza, these are my questions. Thank you so much for talking to us about so the uh, Tibetan, Tibet Museum mm -hmm. and on the International Museum Day. And it was always lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.